Hello folks and welcome to our video about why we will never ever buy another Samsung fridge. Uh, Vanessa has given me strict instructions to keep this brief which is always a challenge for me but we will do our best. But this, the, the purpose of this video here is to explain our history with regards to Samsung fridges and why we will never buy another one. And we wouldn't recommend, obviously, if you want to buy your own Samsung fridge, go ahead. And if you've had a good experience with them, then fair ball to you. And I'd appreciate it if you let us know. But we will definitely not be buying another one. Now, what I have here is I have some notes that to keep me on the straight and narrow. So, I, yeah, so I don't go off rambling on a tangent. But there could be some tangentialization. Uh, and it's not just me. You do have a tendency to tangentialize yourself. Okay, so I'm already tangentializing. Okay, so the title of this video is Why I Will Not Be Buying Another Samsung Fridge by Us. Now, we bought our first Samsung fridge. Oh, by the way, this is the end of June 2021 for people watching it in the future. And hello to future it's 27th me. 27th of June. 27th of June. And hello mm -hmm. to future me and Vanessa. Uh, Vanessa is heavily pregnant, by the way, at the moment. We're due our baby in about a week. <laughs> And that plays a factor. That plays a role in this. Okay. So we bought our first Samsung fridge in 2026. And it included a ice dispenser and a, wa a water dispenser and an ice maker. Mm. Which are essential as far as I'm concerned in this modern day and age with regards to having a fridge. I like using ice all the time. So not having an ice dispenser or having to make ice all the time is a pain in the neck. After, I'd say fairly quickly, the ice, I, we feel it was about after about a year or two, the ice or the water dispenser yeah. stopped working, wasn't it? It, it, was it stopped quick. working fairly mm -hmm. quickly. But really, as we never really used the water dispenser, it didn't really matter. It was mm -hmm. a bad sign of things to come, obviously, a bad omen. But we didn't really mind because, we, you know, it didn't, the water quality in Ireland is great and you just drink it straight, mm -hmm. straight at the tap, right? The ice maker failed after approximately five years, we feel. Yeah. Yeah, okay, it's a long time ago, but we think basically it just gave up making ice. And we were outside warranty at that stage. Therefore, we just accepted the fact that we were not going to have any ice made by the ice making machine. And we resorted to using trays the same as everybody else or buying, buying bags. bags of ice. Now, look, a bag of ice is only about a euro, uh, isn't it? So yeah. so it's good value. And you, you can bring them home from the shops and stuff mm -hmm. as well. So it's grand, right? There's no there's no issues with buying bags of ice. Then the fridge, so the design of the, the way they had, they had this dual cooling system within the fridge itself. And there's a fan in the back of the fridge, not the freezer, in the fridge. So it's, it's what we have is one of those American style. You can see behind us, right? We have an American style barn door kind of effect with the fridge freezer on one side and the fridge on the other. And within the fridge component, there's a fan that circulates the air, blah, 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 right? And we notice that it started to make a noise, right? So now remind me, Vanessa, I have... A noise recording. of this current fridge. I need to let the people listen to, but it started to basically make this kind of noise, and we didn't know what it was. And uh, but we started to notice within the back of the fridge, ice started to protrude out of the various parts within the freezer. Right, so we knew and it was the vegetable crisper box down the end. Everything that you put into it was freezing. Yes, yeah, so things started to freeze. So clearly, the fridge was having some kind of problems with maintaining its temperature in some way. Right, um, we did. We did, so actually don't, the, the fan must have started before the warranty ended because we got, we got them, them out. out. So yeah. what they did was they came out, they basically unscrewed, they, we had to take everything out of the fridge. They take out the, when you look into the fridge, you can see, say, the, in the back. They took out that piece, which they left with us, mm. right? Your man just dumped it here out the back. And uh, what they did was they put in a new one and that was the end of it. And we thought job done, right? So they're yeah. basically just little plugs and you just plug it all back in and then it worked. And that worked for a while. But then slowly but surely, it also started to ice up. And I have been doing my research in that I think Samsung fridges generally and worldwide have some kind of issue with this is an ongoing issue for our Samsung, right? So um, that, that component failed as well. And the fridge started to ice up. But because we were out of warranty with them, we didn't. We didn't follow it up with them. And what we resorted to was basically was that I would have to defrost the fridge. And um, it was a mad palab of trying to basically clean out. You know, it's very inconvenient. OK. So whatever. The fridge start, the fridge fan started to ice over and make a lot of noise. The Samsung replaced the components, but it failed again. And we resorted to per the, the defrosting it periodically. Uh, and after 14 years of intermittent issues, 
we decided that what we would do is replace the fridge. Now, some, some people might say 14 years, that's great. And it was still working. Mm. It was still working. But the fridge was bought at, to be a fridge. Mm. But it, it stopped making ice. The ice dispenser failed immediately, more or less. And the... The water dispenser did as well. Sorry, yeah, the water dispenser. Yeah. And then the um, it started making that noise. And I would say, I, I think I had to defrost it once and then we were good for about a year or two yeah then i did it again but then slowly but surely it started to get worse and worse yeah and if you think about it right if you think about it you're having some motor spinning inside a fridge that what can happen is that about you know if the ice blocks it and the motor keeps turning it could potentially overheat we're away all of a sudden yeah yeah and this happens you see Mm -hmm. people one of the largest contributors to fire fires in the home are things like your um your utilities yeah, yeah. kind of really kind of mm-hmm. playing up so so that was always at the back of our mind so the thing is if we were going to go away and the fridge started to act up we were forced to having to defrost it you know to be on the safe side so that was the end of that after 14 years we said we would replace it and we went shopping for a new fridge let me just see what the note here is yeah so the point i'm making here is that effectively at the end of that period the fridge worked the freezer worked and the fridge worked but it was a liability. Mm. So, the, so it, you know, after 14 years, it was still working in that, like, if you didn't mind the noise mm. and you're prepared to deal with the issues, fine, right? We, we probably could have kept on working. it. So then what we did then was, I'm going to go into the new fridge timeline of what happened. Uh, and effectively, when we went, we went shopping for a new fridge. And um, so we went shopping for a new fridge. And so we went to all the electronics places yeah. and... So what you're trying to do is you're trying to balance the things like the ice maker and the water dispenser and the price. Yeah. And Samsung ticked all the boxes. It did. Against my better judgment. Yeah. But for me, it was an ice dispenser, an ice maker, a water dispenser. It was a good price. It was a big American style fridge. And it was also 14 years after we bought the first one. Mm. So then I was, that was kind of the one I wanted. But what, what was your view then, V? I didn't want to go with Samsung. Really. Why not? I I just felt that we had given them a chance and it hadn't worked out originally. And that for me, yeah, having ice and water is important, but having something that's fit for purpose is more important. Yeah. And I didn't feel that the last fridge freezer was. I would have just got a regular fridge freezer had yeah. it been up, left up to me. Yeah, and you were fairly adamant at the time. Mm. Right, so the thing about it is, Vanessa was very adamant at the time that she did not want another Samsung fridge. So I pushed for her thinking, the logic of it is, it's 14 years, V. If mm. they haven't solved this by now, um, you know, we could have just got a bad fridge or something mm. like that as well. So that's the thing. So I pushed for it and that's what we did. Now, so we went out, we bought it from a large branded uh, retailer. retailer in Ireland that everyone would know. And um, the first sign of trouble was that when the guys delivered it to the door. Okay, so they arrive in a lot of packaging, and the guys delivered it to the door, telling us that we'd have to take the door off the hinges to get it. Like the like bulls in a china shop. Yeah. yeah. Now it was in the middle of COVID and blah blah blah. Mm. But what they did was they basically dumped it at the door. Now we were able once we took all the packaging off, we were able to slide it through our doors into mm. the kitchen. So that was the first sign of trouble. Anyway, but that's more to do with those guys. Anyway, I've gone off tangent. So the new timeline is in May 2020, right? So and again, the height we of COVID. Yeah. So we went out. We um, it was probably during one of the breaks from a lockdown where we were mm. able. Or were fridges essential or something fridges, like that? Fridges are essential. Yeah. yeah. So we went out and bought a fridge, and then they delivered it, and then we installed it. And it's one of these fridges that's plumbed in as well. So, but the connections were there from the previous fridge, which 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 there wasn't an issue. So we got that. So immediately. From day one, it wouldn't make ice, mm. right? So th- we just couldn't get it. It wouldn't make ice. The, the ice maker was turning and stuff like that, but there didn't seem to be any kind of water. And we contacted Samsung, and the view, their viewpoint was leave it for uh, leave 48 it, hours, yeah, wasn't it? Leave it for 48 hours. And to be fair to them, we did. And it did start to make ice. Yeah. It did start to make ice. So whatever was going on, obviously it had to, whatever the insides are building up pressure or whatever that was, I don't really understand. It started to make ice, right? So that was the thing. But then what happened then was it was only filling half the tray. Mm. It seemed to be uh, we were getting like one or two ice cubes. And what we also noticed then was that because it was only because the flow into the into the um, the tray was so slow 
that what was happening was when the water was coming in, it was basically freezing back up the spout. Yeah. And then the little water spout that provides the water to it was freezing solid. So it's just a little flexible rubber tube and it goes quite a distance into the fridge. Mm -hmm. But what happens is that it was freezing solid. So then we were back to having no ice again. And we contacted them about this, that what was happening was that um, so the pressure is fine, right? There's no issue with the pressure because that's the first thing that they go on about, like, is there pressure, enough pressure in the water? It is because we were, in fact, at one stage, we're getting loads and loads and loads of ice. Mm. Um, so it was working really, really well. But anyway, so but we we basically then we we contacted Samsung again and they sent out the engineer and the engineer came out to have a look at the ice maker and he replaced he replaced a sensor that's yeah. what he did he said something was gone wrong with the sensor now the engineer vanessa is we won't name him uh but the engineer seems to have a bit of a problem with us complaining about this ice maker not working yeah. doesn't he now he's the samsung engineer that they seem to be constantly referring us to presumably in the dublin area but it seems to be he's coming out saying to us uh it's not the fridge it's you and we're like, how is it us? And he's saying, well, you know, I, I'll never forget his comment. It's a real first it's world, a first prob world problem, guys. And he wasn't saying it in a kind of mm. oh, first world kind of problem. It's kind of like, am I really what here? Are you about? Am I really here? Mm. You know, in the middle of COVID. Now he didn't say that, but I, I don't know what his motivations were. But he was mm. kind of going, oh yeah, so your ice dispenser, your ice dispenser doesn't yeah. work. And we we're like, um, uh, we paid how much? It was over twelve hundred euro. Twelve hundred euro mm. for a fridge specifically bought for an ice maker, and and uh, a month later, it's not working. Yeah. And so his 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 approach was a bit kind of off. We were like, um, okay, um, fair enough. So he did what he did, and then he left, and then he came back to fix the sensor, wasn't it? I think that's the thing. He did, yeah. And yeah. then we had to call him out again a few weeks later because, if you remember, the whole tray was filling up with ice and not, yeah, breaking. So so yeah, so the thing then is when we've gone from having one or two ice cubes to basically it filling the ice <laughs> the tray, and instead of each of the little trays, so the way it way it works is that it fills a tray and then the water overflows into the next little component little compartments. But what was happening was it was filling solid, yeah, and um and then it couldn't turn because basically it was so the whole the way it works is that the there's a little motor that turns the ice dispenser. It breaks the ice and yeah. the ice basically tips out. But because the, because the tray was solid at this stage, it wouldn't turn, and the ice the ice couldn't dispense. So then the ice wasn't leaving the, the tray. More water was coming in, and it was basically building up. So it was freezing that. So it was basically getting worse and worse and worse. And at that stage, then um, we contacted them again. So and let me just see here now. So the intermit intermittently the ice maker fails. Oh yeah. So so then um, he he called back. He called back at that stage and replaced the whole ice maker unit. Yeah. That's what he did. So that was yeah. the next thing. So basically, the whatever, he just basically reaches in, does a few things, lifts out the whole compartment and put the new ice machine yeah. back in. Boom. We were back in business. We had ice and it worked away fine. Right. Yeah. What I did notice was that from time to time, the little spout would um, freeze up again. Mm. Pe you know, like... From time to time, right? So every every few months, it might freeze over and then freeze back up for whatever reason. And what we discovered was that if you just leave the ice maker off for about three days, yeah. it has some system inside clearly to defrost itself. Mm. I think he mentioned it was a he heater. He mentioned there's it, does a heater in it, yeah. So, and I think that was what was wrong at one point, that the heater wasn't working, the sensor heater wasn't yeah. working, and that's why he replaced that. So, the heat, so then what happens, if you leave it off for about three days, it sort of the, the pipe defrosts itself. And then as you start to run out of ice, you can turn the ice machine back on and boom, hey, presto, yeah. away you go. So that was that then. The fridge, um, so we were getting tons of ice. Yeah. Uh, loads and loads and loads of ice. In fact, we were getting uh, probably a bit too much ice. We were because, turning it off ourselves. I yeah, because we were having the real, because yeah. we were going from uh, 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 not a lot of ice to an abundance of ice. And then we were kind of turning off the ice maker mm. from time to time. Again, norm, normal practice if it builds up. So we were in the winter at that stage then and you're kind of going, probably not eat, needing as much ice and stuff like yeah. that as well. But that's that. Okay, let me just see. The thing I've noticed about the engineer as well is that he doesn't return your calls. No. Um, which is kind of frustrating. So you'll uh, ring him and leave messages and he doesn't seem to get back to you as well, which is very unprofessional. Mm -hmm. Now, what he does say is, he says, uh, send him a text. So we did, and I'm leading to how I know we definitely sent him a text, but he doesn't seem to get back to you for some strange reason. Again, I don't know why, right? It's moving on. Okay. So 
now at this stage now what we the next thing we noticed was the fridge started to make a noise the freezer the freezer so mm-hmm. i'll play the noise here what i'll what i'll put into context when i was on the call i rang samsung about this and i explained to them that the so you have to go through the rigmarole so here's a tip if you're using the live chat you get put onto a bot to answer answers all your questions and it's quite frustrating the way to cut through that is just basically type in human help that seems to trigger the bot to say do you want to talk to somebody and then um because presumably you might have some kind of communication issue mm-hmm. and then what it does it triggers them so i was on the phone to the samsung guy and i explained to him so again they ask you is it level is it this is it that you go through all the rigmarole with them and you say yes it is it's fine the engineer has been and gone and he hasn't seen any issues in regards to that as well but what I did was I, I, I recorded this. So this is the fridge when it starts to make the noise. Right? So that's enough of that. No? Yeah. And that's what the old fridge sounded like. Mm. So you'd be up in bed at night and you hear this basically like someone has a jackhammer going on downstairs. Mm. But the, the fear obviously is, again, just this whole fire piece mm. that if, we're, if we don't report it to them, we just leave it as it is. We run the risk of the house burning down and we kind of go, well, you know, whatever. And it's still within warranty. The only good thing with Samsung is they give you that that five-year warranty. Okay. There's no point in them giving you a five-year warranty if they avoid contact with you. Well, well this is what we're building up to now, isn't it? Mm. So so at this stage now, at this stage now, um, the we have to leave the ice maker off because every time we turn the ice maker off, we start getting that freezer. So we're back to square one yeah. of having a fridge freezer with no ice, right? Okay. So let's see, where was I? So we got the free, we got the engineer back out then at that stage, and we we um, again this is all done through Samsung. So what we do is we contact Samsung, and then what they do is they contact the engineer, and then the engineer mm-hmm. calls out. So we're kind of going around the houses on this one as well. And he called out the last time. So and what he did was then he so after me calling, I I spoke on the phone to Samsung. They contacted the engineer, and he came out. And what he said was he had a look around, and then he said that the fridge needs to be replaced full stop now you had a conversation with him Vanessa how did that go so I had the conversation with him he was saying that he felt we were leaving the door open and that's what was wrong and that the sensor isn't going to go off the sensor alarm isn't going to go off because you only have if you're only leaving it slightly open but as I explained to him and I and I, I stated to him that I explained to him previously when he was out we are not leaving the door open no there is no way and it's only around the ice maker that the the ice is building up now i have taken some photographs so what i'll do is i'll put the photographs up here at this stage right so he said to me then he said well how long do you have it and i said well we only have it a year i said but this is possibly your fifth time being out to us in that year so he said to me well the next step is to replace it so i said okay so he didn't actually do anything what he was doing was he was he was slamming the fridge door to show me how the freezer door might open and that's true if you shut yeah. the fridge door the freezer door does pop out for a second you can but you have it. to kind of give it quite give a, it a wallop, right wallop you know for, for it to, to pop open yeah. which like we don't manhandle anything no do you know what i mean like we had the last fridge for 14 years yeah we don't minded. we don't manhandle stuff in this house yeah so i mean if it does if it, if you do slam the door and that pops open surely that's a fault in the of course so you, you have to be able to open yeah, the door. So I did. Close it. I did say to him, like maybe just because he said that it's it's air getting in through the door from the door being left open, and I said, well, maybe there's a fault in the seal of the door. Then yeah. I said, but it's definitely not anything we're doing. Yeah, you know, and the fact that we've had this exact same issue with a previous Samsung fridge is just mind boggling. <laughs> Yeah, so I, did, I think is again, I don't like his approach. His approach is that what he's doing is he's blaming us and yeah. uh, he's saying that um, it's something we're doing. And I think the thing is, in all good faith... He's taking it personally. In all Well, it, well, he's a strange approach to customer care. I'll give him mm-hmm. that much, right? So in all in all good faith, uh, I w- what I would say is that uh, we are doing everything we can to make this fridge work. And it seems to be that the fridge is faulty and we have mm. a case history here. Now, for him to be saying things like it's the door and all that kind of stuff, you're kind of going, or it's us shutting the door or this kind of stuff, you're kind of going, it's not. Because obviously we have to be able to open and close the fridge. And not only that, if you have the freezer door open while you're rooting around for your pizza or your frozen peas or your ice creams or something like that as well, how, how else are you going to get access to mm. the things? And some people, like if you come home with the shopping, 
and you have a lot of frozen stuff, you're going to put it in. The door is yeah. going to be open. The yeah. fact that the fridge frosts over with the door open is clearly some kind of issue. Now, I did hear, I think it might have been the engineer or somewhere, someone said that they struggle in air climate because yeah. of the humidity. The, the, the fridge is made the same for all over the world. Yeah. So there's nothing. So like we, we would get the same fridge as is made for Mexico, say. Yeah. And they struggle to heat. Your man, the guy that actually came out, the engineer guy came out, he actually said to me that they they, they, they do better in some climates than they do in others. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. Okay, well, that, that's fair enough. So so the thing then is, uh, he said he said that Samsung would, he would, con he would, he would report to Samsung to say, that the fridge needed to be replaced. Mm. So we're kind of going, okay. And off he went. He said, I'll, I'll do that tonight. Yeah, so he was gone. And that was the end of it. So there was no no report given to us or this and this stuff. So you're kind of going, okay. Now, keep in mind, he seems to have a bit of a, I'm going to say a bit of an attitude with us mm. for some reason. I don't know if it's just us or other people. but he's, And I don't, I don't know why, because we've been nothing but nice to him. Mm. Um, but there seems to be this thing. So... Forgive me if I didn't have a huge amount of faith in the fact that I think that I thought he was going to go and do this again, referring back to this kind of being a first world problem for us, right? Mm. You kind of go, um, okay, fair enough. Like, you know, I know it's only an ice maker and no one's going to die because of it, but you're kind of missing the whole purpose. Mm. It'd be like buying a car and buying it with air conditioning and the air conditioning not working. Yeah. Going, can you just not open, can you just open the window maybe? And you kind of mm. go, uh, yeah, yeah, but I kind of paid extra for that. Anyway. So what I got then, about a day or two later, we got, about two days later, we got a message from Samsung saying the case was closed and that the engineer had been and gone and that there were, it had been fixed and done and this, that and the other stuff. And you're kind of going, um, no, it hadn't. Now, at this stage, you might, so people might start to say, well, maybe it's the engineer is the issue. Yeah. And you're kind of going, maybe it is. Maybe, maybe he is the issue and that if he did go off and didn't report it and so on and so forth and he hasn't fixed it in the first place and he's not being more proactive, he is. But you see, the thing is, he is their representative, so I'm going to hold them to account because mm -hmm. for all we know, he could be as frustrating, frustrated as dealing with Samsung as we are. Yeah. Okay. So this then, when I got that message, I was like, uh, the case isn't closed. So what yeah. I did was then, again, I contacted them through live chat and I prefer to use live chat because I don't have to kind of, you can just cut to the chase with the customer number, tell them what's wrong, and then they send you a transcript and then you're done and dusted. And you can have the little live chat going while you're working. Like a lot of people, I work from home because of COVID. So what you, you don't want to be kind of doing this stuff on company time. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to do these within um, certain hours. Now, the only good thing I'd say about Samsung is, in fairness, is that you can ring them or you can uh, use the live chat and they have very, they're very flexible regards to things. But mm -hmm. what is the point in having all of this ability to contact them and being open for hours if this is the level of service that we're getting? Anyway, so I followed them up again and I said to them this time again over live chat that is the case closed because the engineer basically called to say that the fridge needed to be replaced and they seem to be drawn a blank on it. Yeah. Right? They, they, they seem to be totally, they were like, um, now, they didn't seem to be kind of filling me in that they had this information. That's where I'm kind of inferring that they were drawing a blank. Mm -hmm. I don't know what their real reaction was. So then they said, what they said was that they apologized and yada, yada, yada. And then they said it, they said they would get a call. I would get a call from an account manager and the account manager would, would ring me. And what they would do is they would discuss the replacement of the fridge. You kind of go, Brent, great. No problem at all. Because we were thinking, how are we going to now get that new fridge in here? We're going to have to empty that fridge. And keep in mind, Vanessa is down to days within mm. having a baby, right? We're not talking months here now. We're talking we are days away from the imminent arrival of a new family member. So we're we're kind of trying to plan that and also emptying the fridge, taking all the food out of it, and then a new fridge coming. And again, the last time the last fridge came, the guys basically dumped it in the hall. We were left with all the packaging and the packaging is substantial. Yeah. But I mean, there's so much packaging around that fridge that we couldn't get it through the door. But once we stripped it down, we were able to. Yeah. Right. So it's a bit of it. That's a bit of a jip. But the thing about it is, then, if there is a new baby in the house and all of a sudden then we're trying to have to deal with fridges coming in and all that kind of stuff. Right. It's just starting to turn. It's starting and, to snowball. And, and obviously the fact that we'll have frozen breast milk in the freezer and frozen everything milk. else yeah. that we just yeah. can't let defrost. And it's a potential fire hazard. Yeah. Right. So uh, we don't want to be sleeping in the house with a brand new baby thinking in our fridge. Not only that, it is June and July and August. And mm -hmm. these are key months when you want ice. Right. So you see again. OK. So um, 
what they said was what 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 Samsung said was that they would contact me then and um, they didn't we never got a call oh I lied what happened was I was sitting next to the phone I have to see where my notes are right I was sitting so I was in work but from ho working at home and I had an earpiece in right so it's a little push button earpiece you push it once and it answers right so I just gone off a call and the next thing the phone rang so I th so that's that's the, the the sequence is I was so close to the phone I was I was in phone mode right and the phone rang and I could see that it was that number because that's zero three 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 you know four four three 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 like that's they have a strange kind of looking number and what happened was the phone rang I hit answer because my hand I just come off the call I hit answer and I was going hello yes you know Jason speaking and there was no one there yeah so cynically i could be wrong in this but i got the feeling that someone rang hung up immediately because i hit answer right so i went hello so cynically i'm saying is that what they did was they rang and then hung up and then, then what they're saying mm -hmm. is we ticked the box yeah. we rang you and you're kind of going uh okay so but technically they did tick the box they, they did, did ring they did but hung up immediately <laughs> right hung up hung up there. like the call ended immediately and I couldn't, I, now I could forgive them if it took me, say, 10 seconds or 30 seconds to get to the phone or something like that. And you kind of go, fine. So then I went, all right, okay, I've missed the call. And then I sat back and I said, they're going to ring back, right? Because mm -hmm. you can imagine someone going, I missed that one. I'll hang up. I'll ring another one and then I'll ring them back, right? And that would be the kind of thing. That's how you think how customer service probably works, right? But they didn't. They didn't ring me. And about an hour later, I rang them. So then I rang them. And then it was like, a, you'll be on hold for a minimum of 10 minutes or something like that, right? That's what it said. So you're going to be on hold. Now, meanwhile, I'm in work and I'm kind of going, I can't be on hold for 10 minutes. I'm going into another meeting and this and this stuff. And that's the way working from home, everything is done over meetings and phone calls and every kind of stuff as well. It's not like a normal meeting where you can sort of be in the meeting. And you're and ringing your phone. England. Well, yeah, well, I, I don't know if it's free phone or not. It's a 44 number. So if it's not a free phone and you're on it hold for be. 10 minutes, well, I don't know. Because you're ringing I don't from know. a mobile. I see it in my next phone bill, yeah. you know, because if I ring them and I get a huge phone bill, well, then I know obviously that's what that's the issue, right? Mm -hmm. But really, realistically, they should be ringing me back. Yeah. It's a multi-billion dollar organization. It's up to them the to least they could do is you call me. Okay. Good way around. So then I contacted them, and then they said to me, they I contacted them the next day, and mm -hmm. then what they said to me was that somebody had contacted me that day, and I went, no, they didn't. They rang me the day before because they were trying to say to me that they'd contacted me that morning and that they hadn't gotten through to me. And I said, no, no, they haven't. They rang me the day before and cynically hung up. And in that way, then there's no return phone call. Not only that, the point is I could have been on the toilet. And this is what I said to Samsung, right? I have the transcript because they do send you transcripts of your conversation with me. And I said, I could have been on the toilet. I could have been on the phone. I could have been in a meeting. I could have been looking after the kid. I could have been doing anything. But to ring once and not ring back just seems ridiculous. It seems to be, oh, well. Mm, so you see, be fixed. Quite, quite cynically for me, what I'm starting to build to here is that now they realize they probably have to replace the fridge. And we're going down this kind of uh, rabbit hole of them kind of stringing us along. And I am familiar with other videos of people, especially in America, mm. where they seem to be dealing with this kind of issue of people being strung along by Samsung of kind of stalling with regards to who's going to pay to replace this fridge. Now, ultimately, what we're saying here is that if they do replace it, then fine. But if it goes, it's a goner. And what we'll do is we're going to basically say we want either our money back or we'll take them to the small claims court or something like that as well. That's what we're basically saying. To you. OK, so let's have a look here. They, what they said to me was they apologized for not contacting me. And what they said they would do then was I made an appointment. So this is Wednesday morning. And what they said was they would contact me on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Mm. And I went, grand. 10 a.m., Friday, no problem. No call. And I was sitting, waiting. Now, I was conscious of meetings and this, that, and this stuff. But I said, I had said to them, 10 o'clock is, they said to me, when? I said, they can ring me immediately, right? They can ring me immediately and I'll discuss it with them now. Or they can ring me on Thursday between these hours. That's fine. But they said, no, Friday at 10 a.m. And I went, grand, perfect. Friday at 10 a.m., no call. And I, I seriously was literally waiting to answer that phone. So if someone thought they were going to kind of ring me once and get off the phone, there was no way it was going to happen. So then what happened was I waited and waited and waited, and there was no call. No call whatsoever. And then this morning, Sunday, this morning, my phone pinged. 
at 20 to 9, right? Pinged. I got a text message. Excuse me. I got a text message this morning at 20 to 9 to say, we tried to contact you, but we missed your... Um, we missed. Let me see. Let me just read what it says here, right? It says, Samsung support. We tried to call you back, but it seems that you're unavailable. Please feel free to call 0333 000 Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Today's Sunday. Mm. So why am I getting a text on Sunday? If they only work Monday to Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and now, it's, now, now, again, it could be the system. It could be. But you see, the thing is, if you're basing everything on one phone call. Yeah. Like, it doesn't really give you a whole lot to play with. If they tried to ring me six or seven times or something, you're going to go, well, okay, I'm probably messing them around. But the fact that they ring you once and then they hang up, then they don't ring it, and then their agents are telling you that they did try and ring it, and then you get a text that Sunday morning. They're playing games. They're playing games. Okay. So Vanessa contacted them. I know it's getting long now, right? But Vanessa contacted them. This is supposed to be a short video of it. Vanessa contacted them to say that Vanessa contacted them via, via live chat. So we have an appointment with them at 9 a.m. on Monday to discuss this situation. Yeah. And that's the end of it. So... So there could be a part two to this. Yeah, we'll see what happens. But Any comments? The way I feel right now, I would rather the fridge was gone and we just go and buy another fridge. From a different brand, yeah. For, absolutely. I would never, ever, ever no. buy Samsung no. again. No, and I have to say, I feel like a horse's ass because mm. I convinced you to get one. Oh, the Perrys. Yeah. The Perrys. Because if you remember, that was the whole thing about being plumbed in. And yeah. It took up less space inside the fridge and stuff like that. And I was saying, well, look, we can still get an ice dispenser, but just get one that we have to fill with water ourselves. Yeah, yeah. And you was like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. Because, again, the whole thing for me really was that I'm thinking it's been 14 years. If they haven't yeah. cracked that technology by now, they shouldn't be. If they're not fit for Ireland, they shouldn't be selling them. No. You know, they shouldn't be fit for, they shouldn't be selling them here in Ireland uh, if they're not fit for purpose. So, um like, but, and it doesn't get manhandled. That's no. the thing. It's not like, like touch wood, nothing we have breaks. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Due to us treating it badly. Yeah. Just it. It just is what it is. You know. Yeah. And so the thing that's why I say that's why the title of this video is never again, never ever 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 again will I buy a Samsung fridge or anything Samsung ever. And what I'd say is that. There's a, we have a small channel. We have about 2,000 subscribers as, as we speak. Some of these videos, some of the videos we put up get about 30,000 views. So what I'm saying to people is this: these 30,000 potential people who might watch that video, this is us saying. Um, Don't this do is, it. Well, this is Eric. You can go out and buy it as well. But what we're saying is based on air experience of Samsung over a long period of time. Is that it's not worth it. And we, what we'd say to Samsung is, you're so polite. We got a letter from the account manager. We got a letter from a customer service manager apologizing and this and this stuff. And they bend over backwards with their level of apologies. Mm. But it's all to pacify it. Yeah. Because the service that they give you so is poor. pants. And keep in mind, again, Vanessa is due a baby. And I'm not kind of pulling on the heartstrings or, the, you know, trying to ham it up or anything like that as well. We are going to be extremely busy over the next little while dealing with an infant. Anyone who's children is going to realize that. And the thoughts of having to deal with a new fridge coming in the door, as I said earlier, and all the shenanigans that goes along with that. But not only that, we can't have the ice maker on because of the fridge and the fear of a born in the house down. Mm. And I just, yeah, no one wants to be dealing with that. Nobody, you know. Mm. So that's that. So thank you very much. If you're still here at this stage, 30 something minutes in, I apologize for the video being so long. Um, it would have been longer only I have notes and Vanessa's here with me and uh, <laughs> she has uh, electrodes attached electrodes attached to my uh, whatnot. Uh, if you have any uh, similar experience or any advice or comments please leave them below uh, thank you very much Slan Slan <laughs>